All right, so we were gonna shoot 50, but there are no longer places to put that stand out there at the 50 yards. And I don't feel like moving all this over there. But that's okay because we'll get a pretty good idea of what the accuracy is gonna be like. Just, just take whatever group we get at 25 and spread it by a factor of two. And that is your 50 yard group. Besides the elevation of these are probably gonna be pretty low. Uh, I think at uh, 25 yards here would be good. Enough. Last time we brought this thing out here, we shot these loads at the 100 yards and uh, <laughs> man, I had to aim at his head with the post way above the rear sight. But this is a Marlin. Oh, I always forget, it's the uh, 1895 GPL. That's the 4570 government. I removed the blue from the lever uh, just for some reason I like the way that looks. And she shot black powder before. She is a pain in the ass to clean, but she doesn't have a whole lot of blowback. Now this is a 357 Magnum. This is a Henry big boy. We're gonna be shooting 38 specials and 357s out of it, all black powder. This one has never shot black powder before, but I reckon it'll do fine. What I'm worried about is blowback, but um, the Henry shouldn't be any more difficult to clean than the Marlin. And I'm also curious with this brass alloy receiver, is if there is blowback that gets in these crevices, will that still cause significant corrosion? Kind of like on the old brass receivers. I really don't know. I know black powder on these will uh, give you some insta rust, what I like to call it. This is just warm water and soap. We're gonna try and put our cases in there. All right, these are once fired with black powder. This is 4570 government. This load is used considered to be a 2F. And these are probably about a triple F. Triple F, I think, is a bit small for 4570, but they're a compressed load. So any worry about uh, explosions <laughs> is non-existent. Yeah, we got our 357 Magnums and a big bag of goo because I ran out of time and didn't feel like wiping off each individual case with the excess lubricant. But this is a 357 Magnum loaded with Triple F homemade black powder. As I and probably forgot to mention. Hair. What? I said, and apparently dog hair. And a lot of dog hair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, our puppy uh, likes to shed. Let's give you a little better look at these. Gooey 357s. <laughs> I figure what can the excess hurt lube hurt when you're shooting black powder? Lots of lube is always a good thing. And here's our 38 specials. These ones are compressed a little more than I wanted them to, so I'm not expecting very good performance out of them. But this is all for fun. Shooting black powder powder nowadays is uh, didn't really just considered for fun. Of course, it can still be very practical just a pain in the ass to clean. All right, uh, let's shoot the little 38, and then we'll move on over to the 45.7. So uh, if you have one of these Henry Big Boys, you probably already know this, but when you're loading them, always try and make sure that you remember to keep this closed. Um, the 38s and 357s are not nearly as bad at this as my 45 Colt, but my, <laughs> my 45 Colt uh, Henry just loves to jam that round under the feed ramp if you leave that lever even just slightly open. And then you literally have to take the gun upside down and just tap on the bank with your hand as hard as you can and it sucks, it's a pain in the ass. So make sure you remember to close the lever. There we go, should be 10 rounds. Ah, you see how it likes to pop open like that. That, uh, that can be a pain in the ass as well. See, look at that. It's not even my fault this time. It actually put one into the into the gun. Let's see if we can push it back up into the okay. Push it back up into the uh, tube, the magazine. 25 yards, 38 special, homemade black powder, 156 grain hand cast, lead bullet dropped out of a Lee mold. Let's see if we can get a decent group 
and if we can prevent the gun from jamming. And done. <laughs> oh, okay. Give me for a second. I'm like, shit. I know it's my homemade black powder, but it ain't that bad. It's not that bad. She's a smoky little one, ain't she? All right, let's see how much blowback we got. This is a fair amount, but it's not terrible. That damn lever kicking up again. That should do it for the 38. Woo, that's nice. Ah. And when you clean it, nothing beats the smell of rotten eggs. Oh damn. Uh, I believe this holds a six plus one rest. All right, so when I was cleaning my gun last time, apparently I forgot to put the ejector back in to the Marlin. See that hole is empty. <laughs> so this is going to be fun. We're going to have to get creative with this. I feel like using these nickel shells is easier to clean. It also seems like they're a bit easier to find in the grass. Because you don't mix yours up with everybody else. Alright, this is going to be fun. Yeah, that, uh, that ejector is just sitting on my work table. Hopefully. <laughs> Dump on that. Very creative. So if you guys ever wanted to know what it's like to try and unload a 4570 government with a missing or a broken extractor, it's your lucky day. Ain't nothing like that big old puff of smoke rolling out the end of that barrel. Get a bit toasty. <laughs> and black powder cartridges get a lot hotter than smokeless, I noticed. Now, with this 4570, I shouldn't get a whole lot of blowback. Here's hoping. A decent amount. 
blowback is the gas escaping around the side of the cartridge and getting back into basically the mechanics of your firearm. With black powder it's unfortunate because it makes cleaning just that much more tedious. Let's go look at our target. Here's our 38, aiming center mass, 25 yards. All right, that's cool. Our 4570 is a little more impressive than I thought. Uh, I was aiming, this is right where I'm aiming, but I think 25 yards is pretty much the, uh, <laughs> the zero for these iron sights with this load because everything beyond this drops quite significantly. All right, so just take these groups and spread them out by about two times. That's about a 50 yard group. And that's about a 50 yard group. Let's go shoot some more. Uh oh, hold on. <laughs> See, one of the felt wads that I put on the back of the 38 specials. Lubricated felt wad, still got some lube on there. Guess they're doing their job. Uh, Triple F black powder should perform a little bit better, but at this range, I don't really know if I'm gonna be able to tell. If you like these little burlap sacks or whole ammo, I like it because it, I don't know, it just gives the old timey feel. I'm sure nobody ever carried around ammo in a burlap sack, but I got them at Walmart if that's where you wanted to know. I imagine you could get them at any arts and crafts store. You could even make your own. You can get stuff in rolls. Let's uh, aim for the neck. Still beats the hell out of muzzle loading. Toasty. Spicy. Whew. One more. Back it up. double check on the video footage but I believe this would be my second group here. Considering I was standing up I said it's pretty good. I'm a skinny guy and 4570s uh, start to weigh a little bit more as you shoot them. Stand by your target. What's that? Stand by your target. Hmm? Stand by your target. Yeah if he was me he'd be dead. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now we're just going to shoot up the rest of what we got, have some fun, enjoy the smoke and the sights and sounds of shooting good old black powder. Nothing beats the real stuff. I mean, when you shoot Pyrodex, you know in your mind it looks real, it smells real, but you know it ain't real.
Sure don't like that last round on the 38s. 357. Mr. Gooey bullets. Get my gooey bullets. A little extra lube can't hurt nothing in black powder. These were actually already pre-lubed with lime and the tumble lube uh, composition. I didn't intend to use these bullets for black powder. So what I did is I gave them a good rub of 50% uh, Crisco, 50% honey. And then underneath them, I gave a generous amount of lubricant and uh, separated it from the black powder with a felt pad. So it's powder, lubricated felt pad, lubricant, lubricated bullet. A lot of work. <laughs> a lot of work. <laughs> But, well worth it. This, what we've shot here in the past uh, 20 minutes has probably been about a day and a half worth of work. Not straight, obviously, just sitting down at the workbench doing a little bit, stopping, taking a break, doing a little bit more. I don't know what rush when I reload ammo. I just like to enjoy it with a cup of coffee. It's like ammo and coffee just goes hand in hand. All right, rapid fire, center mass. Here we go. <laughs> Them ten rounds go quick. That's it guys. That's everything. Let's go check our target from that rapid fire. Unless I missed the target completely on several occasions, it looks like I only missed it twice. But yeah, it's black powder. I don't shoot it for bullseye as I shoot it for the smoke, the smell, and just the feeling of knowing I made it myself. All right, we got a lot of cleaning to do, but first we gotta go home and take the puppy for a walk. So we will see you guys later. I might show some of this cleaning, but there she is, guys. Henry Big Boy shooting 38s and 357s in black powder. And then of course our Marlin over there, which I forgot to put the ejector in. That was lovely.